welcome all uh, to our October Concierge and Land User Group. Uh, we're very glad that you're all here today with us. Um, I did want to note um, before we get too far in uh, that Vix has departed the lab. Uh, we wish him all the best in his next adventure. Uh, he will be missed during these meetings. And Izzy and I, of course, are here. And uh, you might see a new co-host joining us in the new year. Um, I should also note uh, this is our last user group meeting of the year. As our typical November date falls on the day before U.S. Thanksgiving, and our December date falls on Christmas Day. So kind of doesn't work well, I suppose, for meetings. Uh, and we'll see you actually at our next, which will be January 22nd of 2025, which that year just sounds impossibly into the future at this point. But just just a couple of months away. It's funny that way, Claude. Yeah, we usually, you know, get our get our extra peanut ration for the day for Christmas. Let me write that down. Claude says that we shouldn't get the day off. Okay, I'll remember that. Right. Yeah, important to note. But that's uh that's where we are right now. Um, but uh, it's October now and Halloween time. You want to maybe share some uh, some news about uh, what's going on, Izzy? Absolutely. So uh, I've, everybody here knows uh, the Halloween time is a very special time here uh, in Second Life. Uh, we have a lot of big things going on in Second Life. First of all, the new last names. So let me go ahead and first of all, give you the link about changing your last names uh, and the new last names being Claw, Fangsby, Shade, Spooktail, Growl, Bloodstone, Witch, Vile, Ebony, and Phantom, uh, which is a lot of uh, really, really cool last names. And if, as always, you find that you want to suggest a particular last name, there is the link to go ahead and suggest one. Um, we're also hosting a Swagonator hunt again this year, uh, 8th of October, and there are some uh, exclusive gifts available. Uh, it's starting at the Millbank region, which is right there. Uh, annual trick-or-treat in Belisari is ongoing. I believe it started on October 4th, and it'll be going uh, through the beginning of November uh, around all the different Belisari Linden home regions. And let me give you, again, there is a place in Millbank uh, for you to pick up your candy bucket, which is right there. Uh, and you can place it at your Linden home. There's prizes for everyone who travels through the Bellis area content collecting goodies. Uh, and if you have a Linden home and you res out a bucket, for each day that you leave your bucket out, you'll get five free candies credited to your uh, total number of candies. So just by participating and putting out a bucket, you're earning candies toward those prizes. And for more information on that, you can check out this link, I'm like the link person today. Um, both the Halloween Haunted Tour and the Halloween Haunted Neighborhood are back as well. And of course, what does that mean? Another link, uh, which here is the one for the tour. And here is the one for the Haunted Neighborhood, and you may or may not have noticed the zombies in the Welcome Hub. Uh, there's new premium gifts available in the premium gifts area, which of course means another link. Do you have a link for that? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> there's that one. Uh, and a premium, uh, premium plus gift at the Sandbox Redantia. Uh, so definitely check those out. Also, as if that wasn't enough for Halloween, Shop and Hop is, of course, ongoing. And you could absolutely check that out at Drumroll, please, for another link right there. See, this is why Wendy brought me in for this one. She wanted me to be the link guy. Um, all the Halloween fun is going to last. Not Zelda, the but Link. <laughs> all until the 3rd of November. So make sure to check out our featured news blog, which is. 
here uh, for additional details as they come up, and I may have something special to tell you about in a second, uh, and that'll be open until the 3rd of November. And obviously, for more information, including the swirls to all the different stuff about the shop and hop, we have that in our post there. And it'd be remiss if we didn't mention that signups are now open for the holiday shop and hop uh, for merchants across the grid. So signups are on a form, obviously with another link. Good, Sassy, I'm glad. Uh, right there. You're required to offer one gift item plus a 20% or higher discount on others. Uh, and the signups are going to close on October 27th. So that's right around the corner. And you can learn all about the whole shop and hop application process and stuff right there. But the other exclusive thing that has not been blogged about yet, so it's very hush hush, and I know none of you will tell anybody else, but on October 31st, so on Halloween, uh, we're going to be hosting a Halloween costume party at the Helios Casino, and I'll get you that link because, you know, I have to give you all the links. Copy link. And that didn't copy, so I don't want to give you the old link twice, so give me one second to grab this link. No, you have to have it right now. <laughs> well, I do have it right now. See? Right, right there. Now. See? There um, you are. Patch is going to be uh, hosting. There will be Halloween-themed dad jokes. So those of you that had fun with the last one. And there are going to be three contests that are going on. There's going to be a best Elvis costume, non-gender. Best Elvira costume, non-gender. Which means, you know, you can be a male Elvis, or a female Elvis, a male Elvira, a female Elvira. And the third uh, contest is going to be just best costume that isn't Elvis or Elvira. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and that is from noon until 2 p.m., uh, second lifetime so i think that would be you know a great time for all of us to get our spook on and have a really 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 good time okay now i can breathe for 30 seconds except for the fact that i think i'm supposed to do the next one that's fine um, we'll let you Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and obviously this has a very particular um, place in our hearts uh, being an online community. So October is also Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and because hackers and phishing is the wrong type of Halloween tricksters, we don't want you to run afoul of them. We want to direct you to a blog post. Gee, I knew there'd be another link in here somewhere. Here it is. Thank you for keeping uh, track, Sage. Um, for some great tips on keeping your Second Life accounts safe as well as your digital cells throughout the internet. So please give that a read. Stay safe out here in cyberspace and have a wonderful Halloween uh, period. It really is one of my favorite times of the year, for sure. I mean, between that and cybersecurity and awareness time, month is your favorite no, time of the no, year, Wendy. Well, that too. <laughs> it's you know, and it seems yeah, cybersecurity awareness month has just become so commercial lately. Um, no. <laughs> um, I remember when Y two K was talked about, and people were selling Y two K spray as if that was going to keep it away. You mean it didn't work? No, it didn't work. But well, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone dressing up as, as their favorite firewall. Um, I'm go. coming as an ad blocker, actually. <laughs> it's true, Claude. Actually, I knew a few people who did a lot of work on that, so I'm glad that glad that they did what they did. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the. Uh, improvements that we're doing right now. Um, as we talked about a bit in our last meeting, um, we are still looking at issues related to the PBR rollout, uh, making sure everything works as well as it can. Uh, there is some work currently going on, on the viewer side of things. Uh, the current Delta FPS viewer, which is now also part of some of the third party viewers at this point, uh, are out there. Uh, also with the upcoming extra FPS viewer, uh, which should help with some more of those issues. Um, I know 
that our devs are hammering pretty heavily on this. Um, and I'd also want to add, uh, while we're working on the viewer side of things, uh, I'd like to remind you also to keep your graphic drivers up to date because uh, we have seen some issues there. Uh, that can help prevent some of the crashes and slowness and, I mean, just plain oddities that may crop up on your system and hurt your second life experience. Um, and you can learn a little bit about that at, yes, I too have a link. Trying to steal your job, Izzy. Yeah. And um, you can also learn a little bit more about some of the other performance improvements we're working on uh, at this link. Um, and if you have uh, still are seeing some problems with PBR, you know, around performance or crashing, you know, bug splat, all of that, um, I would recommend checking out our server user group. Uh, that's held on Tuesdays at noon in the Denby region. Yes, at that link. And um, you can also go to our feedback portal, which, yes, is at a link. Um, we are just, we are full of it today. Full of links, I mean. Full of links. And I just want to remind us, we really want to make sure, you know, part of our job in support and also is true for our devs and everyone else is that we're really trying to help you get the best experience in Second Life as possible. Um, you know, that's really our goal. Uh, also coming up, um, yeah, I can make a link, Linda, but I'm tempting. Um, another thing that's coming up is, of course, our update to our voice services. Uh, as we move away from the older uh, VVox systems and onto WebRTC, um, this will provide voice services in Second Life to have higher quality audio, including stereo audio, uh, some settings for noise reduction, automatic gain control, uh, echo cancellation, as, as well as some improved security protections. Um, we, it'll also give us a, a far greater likelihood of adding additional enhancements uh, down the line that I'm pretty excited about the possibility of. Um, and uh, if you want to try WebRTC, if you want to check that out, uh, you can give it a shot at the following regions. And just for fun, I'm not going to put these as links. You can find them via the map. No links. No links. I'm going to just put those straight out like that. Cheater. That's me. No. Um, you also want to make sure you have the most recent Second Life viewer in order to give this a try. Uh, so you can, you know, go ahead and give WebRTC Voice a, a shot. Um, oh, and... You know, another thing about uh, about uh, the change is a bit of a downside, perhaps, is that uh, it does mean the loss of our existing voice morphing system. Uh, Vivox actually was supporting that for us. Uh, we do actually have a FAQ on WebRTC, uh, which will give some tips for using some of the existing third-party voice morphing services. Um, and do you want to know where that is? A link? It's at that link. Um, oh, and also slightly related to, to all of this, uh, we did have a brief VVox voice outage a week or so ago, which is all the more reason to move to a more robust system such as WebRTC. So I think that overall that's going to be a, a welcome change. Um, Patrick, I'm really not sure. Um, from where I am, but it's, it's there. There's we're actually in the middle of the transition period now. On it, it's going to be here for a little bit as, you know, all the server software gets updated and also as new viewers roll out. Um, right. I know it's certainly a concern with, uh, 
especially with the third party viewers, making sure that they are all set up for it um, before we flip the switch. Because, I mean, we're trying to do our best to make sure that everyone can can access everything um, without breaks and loss. Sage, that's my birthday. <laughs> any questions on, on any of that or anything we've discussed so far, or for that matter, anything else that you want to make sure to, to address, uh, please feel free to jump on in with it before I start talking Linden Holmes. Oh, go do it. We want to hear about all the Linden Holmes. I bet you do. Okay, okay. Um, as usual, we've released uh, some more Linden homes in the existing styles. Uh, we've focused currently on more ranch homes and uh, more Mediterranean homes for our Premium Plus residents. Um, I know that just before I got here, I was uh, out there uh, getting some of the uh, the new Mediterraneans assigned. Uh, they are always very popular and very sought after. So we do try to keep those in stock as much as we can. Uh, there are also some of the other styles that are under construction. Um, and, and also, um, you know, we have, um, well, we've got some new styles that are coming up. They have been discussed, so I can, can mention them. Um, hey, that link I right know there. that link. <laughs> Beat me to my link. <laughs> But, um, you know, that's, uh, we had uh, some forum discussion and a poll that Patch held um, on possible new themes. And the winners of those are the Tiki slash water theme and also an Alpine style theme. So you know, think snow. Um, those are also kind of in the works. Um, I don't have any updates. I don't have any releases, um, you know, but they are being worked on. So we should have some news and on that pretty soon. I just seen some early drafts of them, and they look really cool. I wasn't going to say anything, but yes, they do. <laughs> Never sure what I can say about those. Um, and of course, also, um, if you are looking to acquire a Linden home of your own, um, Please, uh, if you're a premium member or premium plus member, we do have the Linden Home Selector, and I'm just going to put it in there just because. Right after my Izzy keeps feeding me to them. <laughs> uh, you can also preview all of the uh, Belisaria Linden Homes in the. You going to drop me a link, Izzy? Nope, nope. I'll let you do that one. Oh, he's he's <laughs> he's he's getting me here. Fine. You can preview all of the styles, every theme, and every home on the Belly Demo region. Um, and as far as um, I saw mention of um, um, questions about adult rated uh, ones, uh, not yet, you know. Um, we're always looking for new ideas, things that can come up. So who knows, might happen. Would be the thing that would stop that from happening because I can see that. You know, people still want that sense and the same perks that everybody else with us. They might not exactly have the lifestyle of wandering around, um, promenading down their street in adult wear in the normal belly regions. And they should. Sassy, um, the only thing I can say right now, because I'm literally needing to sit on my hands so I don't type, is more to come. Okay. Because Zindra was kind of a... <laughs> well, do you remember a uh, post, oh gosh, months ago about Second Life going spicy? Yes. It, it, it's not fake. Okay. So spicy means potentially adult Linden homes, but we're not going to lock that in spicy, on you. But I can't go into more detail yet. Right. Okay. Just assumed that meant you were going to finally put RLV in the regular viewer. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? It would. 
It might also mean that we're simply adding cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, and a number of other fine pumpkin spices to the viewer. <laughs> Does also mean that that could be just the new color range of skins. How many of you guys brought your tomatoes to throw at Wendy right now? <laughs> I'm not wasting. Please, we just, we just had the pillory <laughs> Linden event. What do you want? <laughs> How much tomatoes cost these days? <laughs> right. Well, they're prim tomatoes. And now I'm not asking you to throw mesh tomatoes. Come on. Mesh tomatoes in this economy? Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I want to Be jump nice, again Sage. to another. Yeah. I want to jump again to another quite, kind of thing. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the mobile viewer because, you know, there's a lot going on with that. Um, you know, we've uh, recently expanded the access uh, to our Plus members as well as Premium and Premium Plus. Yeah. Uh, maybe there will be a little more on that soon. We'll see. Uh, also, it kind of relates to what we were just talking about. You can now access regions of all mater maturity levels on the mobile viewer. Um, you can set that in your viewer. Um, also, um, the mobile viewer is supporting uh, WebRTC voice. Um, yes, you can use those exact same test regions I mentioned earlier that Izzy so kindly put in. Um, I'm going to start calling you Vanna, Izzy. <laughs> keep spinning, spinning the letters for me here. Um, you know, so you can ch test that out on the mobile viewer there. Um, and of course, as that becomes our default voice service, uh, it'll be fully functional on mobile as well. So there will be a whole lot there. Um, additionally, we have added group tags, uh, push notifications, uh, the ability to use Linden dollars uh, to pay objects and avatars in the mobile viewer. And you can, this is my setup for Izzy to get his link there if he wants. Okay, um, fine. <laughs> you don't have to. I got um, it. You can find out more about the current additions to the mobile viewer at that link. Can um, I ask a quick question about mobile, Wendy? Of course. Now, it's possible that nobody here is going to say yes to this, but when we had, and I think we still do on the Welcome Hub, hint, 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 because it may not be there for too long, we had the mobile viewer kiosk out on the Second Life birthday regions, and it's still on the Welcome Hub. Uh, and if you clicked on a particular panel, you got a free mobile uh, uh, in-world prim phone, um, well, mesh phone, I should say, um, that had some say. cute animations and whatnot for it. And I was wondering if anybody here ever tried it out. Other than me. Well, other than Wendy, of course. No? Well, if you go back to the Welcome Hub, uh, you will see a hexagonal... Um, a pillar with pictures on each side of the hex, and one of them talks about uh, a free gift. Uh, so it's a little smartphone that when you're typing, it'll have you looking uh, at the phone like you're texting and stuff like that. Uh, and I thought it was really cute. It was made by LDPW, uh, and I had a decent hand in uh, managing the project of making that and everything like that. So I hope you guys enjoy it make a suggestion as somebody that's a mentor at the Welcome Hub. When you put mm -hmm. things in the Welcome Hub, it'd be really nice to tell us. Well, uh, yeah, that is definitely <laughs> true, and I can explain to you why it didn't happen and the little mistake that was made. So it was put out, obviously, on uh, the uh, birthday regions, and because of permissions, and I know all of you guys know how complicated permissions can be and everything like that, we also gave those pillars to lots of people that were hosting their own mobile parties, but those couldn't give out the gift because, of course, it changes owners and everything. So it, it, it would direct you back to the one on the birthday region. But, of course, those mobile parties went on past the birthday region, so we quickly changed everything to then link over and go to the Welcome Hub. But you're right, we should have let the mentors know that it was there, so that's my bad and I apologize. Whereas it's not the only thing that happens there that we don't get communicated on. Every time I go there, there's like, oh, look, new things. <laughs> and it's... Well, 
Yeah, sort of like kind of having to our leaders about that because they should definitely smack me around to if there's something that uh, doesn't you know or that gets by them that I don't inform them about and I want to be held accountable to it. Right. I mean, Minnie and Viola do a great job. I'm just saying that there's just so much that happens now. We've got Janet, who's great fun, by the way. Oh, awesome! I'm glad you like it. Have you tried the one in Helios Casino? No, I don't go to the casino. It's against my religion. Well, remember, the Helios Casino isn't a gambling. It's more like a Dave and Buster's chips kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a bartender there that you might have fun uh, chatting with. No, whether it's Dave and Buster's or not, even if, if people have a gambling problem, that it's going to be a problem. So I, get I just you. No, I get you. Me. I'm just saying I don't like it that they put that there. Got I think, it. yeah. Back to you, Wendy. I think that actually named Janet, so the reference was obvious, <laughs> I hope. Um, uh, I wanted to Very talk wide. a little about Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple of... Uh, uh, bugs that we've seen lately and make sure y'all were aware of them. Um, first off, there was an issue that uh, cropped up, uh, oh, a little less than a week ago. Um, uh, uh, maybe a little longer. Uh, there was an issue with uh, calculation of traffic on parcels. Uh, this should actually be resolved as of the end of last week. Uh, but if you are still seeing some traffic issues, particularly traffic recording at zero, when it should not be, uh, please do reach out to support and let them know. Uh, but again, that should be fixed at this point. So if you saw it a couple of weeks ago and everything's fine now, then you're good to go. Um, we've also heard of uh, some issues with attachments disappearing. Uh, we will, Sage. Um, also, Philip. We blame Philip for everything. Um, also, if you uh, see some issues with attachments disappearing, and read. Uh, when you teleport or when you load into a region, uh, that should be fixed soon, I hope. Um, also, you can often get attachments that have gone invisible to show up by clicking where they should be on your avatar. Uh, that'll often force them to load. Uh, it can be useful until it's fixed. It's kind of a, a workaround, and it doesn't always work with certain attachments, animesh, and so forth. But that can give you a little hand. Wonderful. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been hitting that a bit in Angeline. I'm sorry about that, too. Uh, another uh, small adjustment has been made to our support hours. Uh, starting this last Friday, which was October 18th, the phone and live chat team are available Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. Uh, to 2.30 p.m. Second Life time. The ticketing system at, and of course I'm going to give you a link because, you know, today is link day. Uh, is, of course, always available. The updated hours are basically set to allow us to focus our peak times uh, and um, make it maybe a little bit quicker and better for your response times. However, of course, you may see future uh, changes and expansions uh, down the road. I actually had to use it yesterday and didn't get the bubble. And, and it was like five minutes to two. And I was like refreshing, refreshing. And then finally clicked something else on the page, and then it opened up another page, and then I got the bubble. But, interesting. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Not, yeah. So um, I even turned off any ad blockers or anything, just in case it was that doing it. But yeah, I had that problem today. Okay, definitely appreciate that. Um, there, um, there is a link about the uh, new hours because, of course, you know, like I said, link day. Uh, that is right there. Um, but um, Wendy, could you pass that up? Absolutely. Hopefully, it's an isolated issue that was some odd third party. Uh, not blaming you, of course, but we all know how uh, different software interferes with everything else. Um, so hopefully, it was a one-off, but just in case. Yeah, and that way we we'll also keep an eye out for it uh, through the rest of support and see if we hear about more issues like that. Definitely. So how sure. is any other? Go ahead. No, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, so how is everybody else's October going so far? Uh, 
And here are the crickets. Oh, I'm glad. I think that's the typing noise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually just came back from a, uh, a week at uh, New York City Comic Con, so I had a blast. It, um, it's been happening a lot at the Welcome Hub too with the attachments thing versus people just being naked and uh, that just Evangeline what Evangeline said that people are unaware of what you're saying to them because they don't know and I actually had somebody that was a couple of months old completely become unhinged because he had no pants on but he could see them nobody else could blah 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 and so then he kept saying, so when are they going to fix this? And I went, um. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and also the reverse can be true because I know there have been several times that I've logged in or teleported and looked like I was missing an article of clothing and I'm like, oh, shoot, I've got to jump out. And everybody around me is like, no, I see you just fine. Um, so it, it's it, that can be very, very frustrating. And I try my best to spend as much time in world as possible because this is our second life. Uh, so I want to experience everything just like everybody else is. If I can't do my work in here, then, you know, how do I expect you to? Uh, but I try my best to experience, well, no, I don't try to experience all the bugs that you do, that you guys do, but I try to expose oh, myself to the same. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, absolutely do. It's, it's a really good thing that we now have bakes on mesh because if we had this, when we had this bug similar in the past, you would be naked. Now you can actually wear bomb underwear as I do and even skin covering um, layers as well. So even if my attachments don't show, I'm not naked. So um, more people can bomb underwear. Well, it is, you know, Halloween time. We could all just wear invisible layers and say that we're ghosts. Um, no, seriously. Um, I have heard, I double-checked it while we were talking. Um, uh, expect it to be a very quick fix uh, within a couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, I'm not going to put that pressure on our devs, but that's what they have said. Um, so fingers crossed on that, um, that that'll be history very soon. That's what I said to this guy, Sage. I said, well, you know, we've had worse shoes and jewelry at your bottom. I didn't let him know that they went up your bottom, but, you know. Yeah. I always liked every once in a while back in the old days, uh, my avatar would actually fold in half. That was oh, I loved that favorite. one. Yes. Bend over and count your rings because your body was split in half. <laughs> it actually came back about two or three years ago for about two days. Yes, and that's around the same time the uh, roof came back for a very short period of time. The best one I've ever seen, and I don't know, and I think it was probably the quickest fix you've ever done and understandably was people's ims printed on their avatars oh yes talk about security issues and also getting um busted for saying things while you're talking to other people it was quick it was like it came and went very fast Uh, but how many of us remember missing image clothing? <laughs> yes, yes, I remember that one too. We're so old. <laughs> we make the finest bugs, though. The friend that had his pants tattooed on his face for about a month. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, do we have uh, any other questions or concerns or other things you'd like to bring up? Uh, we're here for you. We'd like to talk. Either that or we're going to just start dancing and that's never going to work. <laughs> that's when you just say... 
and see if anybody just starts breaking into dance, but nobody wears that hood anymore. So that that's that's the old lore there, is he? <laughs> hey, I'm an old school person. It's true. What kind of notification? What notification? Uh, oh. Patrick was asking about notification changes. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that would depend on what kind of notifications that you're talking about. So, Patrick, it gets even worse uh, when you have a Premium Plus account uh, because that's 140 groups. What I would suggest, by the way, on that, Patrick, um, uh, and I know we talk about this just about every meeting, is to make a new issue in the feedback portal um because that can in other viewers really neat feature was that can in in some um can he, yeah. other yeah. viewers no 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 you can in some viewers uh yeah. select whether you want notices from the groups i just don't think those things work um so viewer not currently no Nightmare. Um, there's not a, a hard limit on how many friends you can have. Um, however, uh, just like inventory and some other issues, um, the more friends you have, especially once you get to, I'm talking like a thousand plus, um, you start seeing some issues with, you know, it can affect login. Um, simply because when you log in, there's a lot of stuff being tossed at your viewer. Um, you know, where you are, all the content where you are, the items you're wearing, all of your friends, your top level inventory. And that can, you know, that can affect because it's checking to see who's online, who's offline. So you might see some quirks. You might not see all your friends list load. Um, in extreme cases, uh, you might see issues with login. Uh, where your login might fail as a result. Um, if you do see that, please let us know and support. We'll do what we can to help. Um, but it takes a lot. It does take a lot of friends uh, for that. Another issue I have seen in the past um, is um, the Second Life feeds. Um, that's Second Life doc, or, or my dot Second Life dot com. Um, you can only follow uh, up to a thousand people. So if you have friends, it automatically follows them, and you might end up not having a following option in that case. So that can also be an issue. Uh, Serena, the the plan is that eventually down the road um, you'll have the same features as you have in the desktop. Um, I don't know how far down the road that might be. Um, yeah, it could be it could be soon, it could be far off. So uh, if it is an important issue to you and if you feel that other people uh, will also find it an important issue, I recommend leaving something in feedback, getting people interested. That gets it onto the eyes of the mobile team, and they start to know that this is an important issue for people. They do a lot of prioritizing by what what people want, what people are are really clamoring for, um, rather than just you know randomly choosing an item to work on. So, the more feedback they get, the quicker it comes up. Can we get a list of, names of, of some of the people that asked for things that are being worked on that shouldn't be so we can go and, you know, stick bananas in their muffin stuff? I would <laughs> never red list a fellow resident. <laughs> I'm just joking, but I'm sitting here listening to you say we, we do the things that people want and I'm like, I know about 758 yeah. people that can say otherwise. Sassy, I heard you very clearly. You totally said, who should we beat up, Lindens? That's, that's <laughs> what I heard. That's what I Ooh, heard. Peel pressure the heck out of me. I said I bananas and mufflers. I did not say beat them up. Oh, beat up their avatars. Come on. 
No, no, thick cars. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm really angry, I'll threaten to whack you with limp celery. <laughs> or throw those prim tomatoes. Hey, don't threaten us with a good time. <laughs> Are we getting those adult regions? <laughs> From tomatoes? I'm totally going to send Sassy a prim tomato. I just know it. I could see it. I want to know and why yeah, would you... Alt was an apple. Yeah, we just did. I, I mentioned earlier, we just had the... Uh, a number of us were part of... Uh, uh, the the SO Renaissance Fair folks uh, did a fundraiser, and a number of us participated in that. Um, thankfully, my team did not come in last, so we did not get pilloried and did not get uh, you know rotten tomatoes and other such items thrown at us. So I'm very happy about that. Anybody else have losses. any questions? I like the idea of spooky homes. When can we have those as a theme? Well, I will say that we are looking into building Linden homes like we've never built them before. Um, so suggestions are definitely um, uh, going to be taken. So I don't know about Baba Yaga uh, Toothless because that would also imply that they could walk around and that would bring a whole host of other problems. <laughs> I just like I mean you've done the Victorian and I think it'd be really kind of cute to do sort of an Adams family sort of style home where you could just swap it out and the different swap the letterbox could be not so decrepit or boarded up or mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. that sort of people would I mean SL would love that well, what I would like to see, and okay, this might be me shooting, don't kill me, Whitney, um, but I would love to see more of the add-on content uh, that would allow you to seasonalize the existing Linden homes. Yeah, that'd be wild. But I don't want to have uh, LDPW do that. I want residents to go ahead and be able to, you know, make that stuff uh, to further the community. I would love that too. That's why I asked for you guys to provide blueprints in the past so that people I know, I know. make add on. I will say that should get easier, is all I can tease in that regard. Is some of those Linden homes are not straight. I once spent a week just in a in a um, houseboat measuring each wall with prims in world and then taking it out and bringing it in and tweaking it again and taking it out because your walls aren't straight. Things don't line up and yeah. Well, we try our best not to require straightness in Second Life. <laughs> Hey -o. That's really all I have. Oh, mega read. Oh, good. Nightmare, that is a good question. Um, a large part of it is, um, you know, what can be best supported? Um, how badly will it harm the regions? How badly will it, you know, affect people's experiences on the region? Um, the more content, the more lag, <clears throat> the more trouble. Um, so we do try to, you know, balance that. Uh, but we also do review things like that on a fairly regular basis. So I'm not going to say that you'll never see a 40k region. Um, but for now, it's for now the max is a 30k. Um, but maybe at some point in the future we'll revisit that. And we had a better opinion, answer for you. In my opinion, from a technical side, and this isn't a promise or anything, but I think pyramid controls are going to have to come into play first. And what I mean by that is 
after a certain point, because right now in a 30K region, you can raise your avatar limit up to 100. You can put whatever number of scripts you want and 30K prims. Really, if we're going to push that envelope, I really think it needs to be sliders to where people understand either it's going to have to have a better platform, which is difficult in an AWS system because they're more... Um, one shop uh, kind of a deal, uh, or it's going to have to be if I slide my prims up, number of avatars or total amount of scripts or whatever might have to slide down. Otherwise, we're going to have people that just believe because it can have a max of 100 avatars, it can have a max of however many scripts, and it can have 30K prims, it should be able to have all of that at once. My partner asked once um, why we can't have um, not not more prims on a region, but more regions on a, as an instance. Sort of like you've got all these people that are, are buying uh, multiple regions and they're next to each other, but sim crossings are horrible. Sailing um, regions are horrible to Sales cross over. Like. Right, so yeah, so why can't you sell somebody a the size of four regions um, that still pay probably some sort of leeway on the money there, but there wouldn't be border crossing. There wouldn't be. There's, there's been a lot of advancements technology wise in a lot of MMOs and whatnot that are um, splitting uh, things uh, like what areas cover what um, content uh, and trying to bl use that to blur the lines between quote unquote what one region handles and what another region handles or what one processor handles, what another processor handles. So I would love to see that kind of stuff moving uh, forward into Second Life, but a lot of it is still in early access kind of uh, software. So I don't know if we're in a position because again while games and things like that have you know maybe 10,000 assets we've got billions of assets so it's a lot harder to test parameters i i just think that definitely i understand what you're saying i just think it would open it up to so many different content creators coming in or staying or building different things if they could you know create a role play region where people can actually run across regions you know facing each other whatever and not lag bend Absolutely. or race car regions where you know you go one direction your car goes another one sort of kills everything off so it'd be amazing if we could just have those bigger regions I agree, and I don't think that it's an impossibility. Uh, it's just because of our complexity, we lag behind in other things uh, in adaptation to those kinds of things because we have to quality test so many different or so many more different parameters. Right, because of the user content, I understand right. too. Yep. And for what it's worth, that might actually be a really good uh, discussion oh, point for the server user group. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to have a, they're going to have a better handle on on the specifics of what our servers can and can't do both now and you know in the near future. And a canny feature request. Yep. Um, as far as AI nightmare, uh, well, we have the uh, Janet uh, in the welcome hub uh, to kind of dip our toe in. So there may be all sorts of possibilities beyond that, depending upon how uh, it's uh, looked at. Of course, AI is always something that's a little tentative to start with, just because of the fact that, you know, Where's the liability? What can you do to break an AI and stuff like that? So it's definitely something that we're looking into. Um, and I actually had a long 
battery uh, with um, uh, an AI that we were looking into uh, that was a mild-mannered, somewhat shy librarian that was interested in writing. And my conversations back and forth not only led to us writing a book together and picking a theme and picking out main characters and talking about the different interactions that they would have and stuff, but the AI kept coming back with, well, in this this scene, you know, maybe we could hearken back to in the pre this other scene where uh, he, the main character uh, said this, and so I mean there was a lot of memory and interactiveness. It wasn't just like a choose your own adventure that they stuck in keywords. So it was actually really in depth, and I was impressed. <laughs> Thanks, Sage. But I, I love AI for the concept of NPCs 100%, uh, but also a lot of games are starting to use AI in a very, very innocuous but immersive way of having the characters that normally are just sitting or, or walking around the city streets or whatever having conversations with each other uh, using chat GBT or whatever uh, to fuel those conversations so that there's more realism. I mean, you could be walking down the street. And wait, he said what? You know, uh, kind of a deal. So I just I think that's going to really give a whole additional level of flavor to things. Uh, definitely, um, AI has definitely been used uh, by a lot of people in uh, removing a lot of redundancy. You know, I need a script that does this. It pulls it up, and then, of course, you tweak it to your own uh, particular uh, needs and such, but it really does help the baseline. <laughs> Link. Yes, yes. Thank you, buddy. That, I, I, could you go ahead and make me one of those? That's hilarious. I actually went to Fort Babbage the other day um, after one of the meetings, the, the content creator user group meeting, and it's it's amazing old-timey England and everything. But you know how sometimes you go to regions and there'll be an avatar, a fake avatar just sort of standing there and they're just supposed to look like they're window shopping or they're whatever. They've actually created um, bots but using animation like that and they're all like animated and scripted and everything so everybody's like moving around and having conversations with each other and they greet you and and welcome you into the different sections at the place and okay AI, AI will only make that sort of thing stronger but it was incredible to see the avatars you knew weren't real people actually moving around like not just in one spot or anything but just sort of circulating it was incredibly immersive I look forward to what they do with that I completely agree but on Black Friday they need to all be frozen so they get out of our way <laughs> such a dork thank you <laughs> I actually have a uh, an animesh figure um, at my uh, uh, Linden Village parcel um, that you can talk with, but he's he's still fairly fairly rudimentary. But I'm working on him slowly but surely. And one thing I do want to, since it's the uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month and everything like that, um, I'm sure most of you already knew this, but with the advent of a lot of the different various chat uh, programs out there, um, you know, obviously. Um, bots can gather information and stuff like that. We all know that. But one of the more recent uh, adaptations to that has been not in Second Life particularly that I'm aware of, uh, but in fake chat environments uh, online, people think they're talking to a chat GBT type thing but some newfangled version that's actually a person who's social engineering you to get you to say uh, different things to kind of pull out information uh, about you. So just always keep that in mind. Every time that we progress in technology, somebody tries to see how they can use it to get ahead. So we always want to just keep awareness.
Okay, everybody go visit uh, Wendy's place and make sure to throw your tomatoes. See, I have to catch up because you, you know, you're, you've got the, the high score for links today. Oh, well, yeah, you get gotcha. to... That's what she's doing with all the tomatoes. She's going to make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big pot of spaghetti on the way. Nightmare, Gotta I think make that's some a great sauce. idea. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yes, agreed, Sage. That, that definitely is something to watch out for also. Terrible. Evangeline, that is a really cute idea. I would love to have, you know, um, uh, AI powered pets and stuff like that. It is amazing how everybody's really frightened of it or anything like that, but you notice how quickly if you use ChatGPT for any, like I'll just ask a basic question now just because I want to do something rather than going to Google. And I'll end up thanking it. Thank you. So much and they're like so grateful back for you thanking them and then you just it just becomes too easy to just be like they're your new little paper clippy dude I think we're pretty much ready to uh, wrap up, but I want to thank you guys for a really, really fun and engaging uh, uh, meeting. I know we kind of joked around a little bit and hopefully nobody was, you know, when are they going to get to the serious stuff? Because we, we try to fill uh, the time with as much entertainment as possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and yeah, the next time we meet will be in January. It will be an exciting new year. Have an amazing set of whatever kind of holidays uh, you celebrate. And as always, very much appreciate everyone coming out today uh, and joining us. Uh, today and every time you're here, um, look forward to assisting you in support in the future. And go check out Shop and Hop. Absolutely. Take care, all.